Hey guys, how's it going? So our game's looking pretty good. We can move it right, left, we even have it going down. And now, we've pretty much got a cool little game here. And we've got randomly generated pieces. I mean, the game feels like this isn't that hard. However, <laughs> it is. <laughs> it's gonna get a lot harder. So now we're gonna have to do, so the thing is, is every time you write one piece at a time, you get like a little bit more complicated and you're not sure if it's gonna fit with the rest of what's going on. Now the only good thing is I have already built this game. So I've, I've completed the whole thing so I know that this path that we're on will take us to the end. But this this right here took me a very long time to, to figure out and that is how to rotate these shapes. So let's talk about rotating a shape. So when you move a shape left or right, all you have to do is add or subtract to the X coordinate or if you're moving down you just add to the Y coordinate so that's what we've done so far so it's not that hard to do because these blocks are all kind of connected so I can just add one to every one of the blocks but what if I wanted to rotate it that's not as simple right what happens to the X coordinates and the Y coordinates when you rotate it I mean I know we did that in our math class but like how are we gonna apply that to a computer program Voila! I have created a tutorial for you on rotations. So, the good news is for this game, we're just going to do the basic rotations, meaning we're going to do intervals of 90. So 90, 180, 270, 360, we'll reset it. So basically, we've only got four possible rotations to worry about. So it's not as hard as it would be if we were allowing the degrees to be anything. So that's a good thing. So let's talk about how that would work in our Tetris game. So first, let's go back to our math class real fast. Don't freak out. I know you guys don't like graphing, but just follow me for a second because this will help us in our game. We got a point, two comma four. So X is two, Y is four, and it's displayed on the screen. And if I want to rotate that about the origin, let's say for the sake of the game, it doesn't matter which way you decide to go. Let's just say we want to go clockwise, okay? How would that affect the point? So try to imagine where that point would be. And it would be right there. So it would be four comma negative two. Now that's not that hard to do. Some kids are better at it than others, but when you look at that point, how do that, how do the X and Y coordinates, which we're using to track our game blocks, how is that connected? So if you think about just the X's and Y's and you look at them, you say, oh, they're the same, but they're switched places. And there's a negative sign next to the two, which is in the Y spot. So basically you could write a formula and you could say, take all the X's and all the Y's and switch them and then make one negative. And in theory that will work. But we actually need to do more than just one rotation, right? We've got to rotate it 90 degrees. We've got to rotate it 180 degrees and then 270. Those are the th three scenarios we have to write. The fourth one is gonna put us back to the beginning. So we can just say, go back to the way you were. Okay, so that sounds pretty easy to do, or not easy, I guess, but sounds like we could do it, but hey, you know what? Go for it. If you can write that method, I will like be super impressed. So send me a comment and say, look, I did it. So if you need help, I'm gonna show you how to do this in the editor. So first of all, I'm gonna to go to the main um, tag, which has all our draw function, all our actual game. And I'm actually gonna comment out, sh move down. So basically I just don't want it to be moving at this point, okay? So, I mean, it can move if I move it, but it's not moving on its own. That way I can kind of test my code a little easier. Um, I'm also not going to, I'm going to use the up arrow, but I don't want it to be in key pressed. See, key pressed, actually what that does is it's, whenever you're holding down the button, it's gonna execute that code. Um, so if I press right, and I hold it, whoops, and I hold it down, it'll just go all the way to the right. And I don't want that for rotations, okay? That'll make my game hard to control. So I'm gonna make it key, whoops, lowercase, key release. Release basically acts the same way, only it only occurs once. It's a, the event is when you let go of the button. Therefore, if you wanted to rotate it three times, you'd have to press the button three times. And actually, you'd have to release the button three times, but you can't release it without pressing it. So that argument was fun. So key code equals up. What we're gonna do is we're gonna say shape.rotate, okay? 
Now, this is actually going to have to be called twice, and you'll see it when we get there. But for now, let's just go pretend like we haven't done this before, because you probably haven't. I have. But let's just go through the rabbit hole, and then we'll modify it. So we go to the rotation, and we start writing the case. So let's go to the very bottom and give ourselves some space here. So we'll say public void rotate. Okay. So there's a couple of things you can do here, but let's just do the first one. So I'm going to rotate my shape and I'm going to actually need a new shape to put it in. So let's first create a new double array. Uh, we'll call it rotated. And we'll just say equals a new int array of dimensions four two, just like our shape. Okay, so this has the exact same dimensions as our shape. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for int i equals zero. I is less than four i plus plus. And according to the slideshow I just gave you, I just switch the x's and the y's, and I make the y have a negative. So if that was the case, I would just basically go ro rotated i0, so each x coordinate, will just be the, the shape um, i1, the y coordinate. So the x coordinate of the new shape will be the y coordinate of the old shape, and the y coordinate, which is i1, would be negative the shape, what is it, um, i0, so that's the x coordinate. So this, by the way, is the way I started it, and this does not work, but it, it kind of works. I mean, but so here's our shape now, it doesn't move because I turned it off, but I can move it left, right, and down, but if I push up, nothing happens. Oh, I have to then change the shape, so. Um, <laughs> Dramatic. I'll probably leave that in the edit anyway. So I'll say, oops, the shape. I have to change the shape and replace it with the rotated amount. So now when I push up, it actually does rotate it, but the thing gets lost. And that's because there's a point of, if you think about that shape that we did when we rotated from four to, or two four to four negative two, it rotated about the origin. That's actually what's happening here. We're rotating about the origin. Well, the origin is way up here. We haven't taken into place the fact that we're moving x and right, x and y. <laughs> so there's, there's by the way, a lot of ways to do this, but this is a YouTube tutorial, and I'm supposed to have, I don't want to trial and error this with you all day. So I'm just going to walk you through my solution. But go ahead and try it if you want. My solution probably is not the only way, but it is going to work so here's how I did it so first I created a second shape so where I did this and I called it OS for original shape so I put a comment there so that you could understand why I chose OS so I go through the constructor but at the very bottom where I set the counter equal to 1 that's for our moving down I'm just gonna say OS is I'm just basically making a copy of the shape okay now I also am going to create a rote counter, also a rote count, rotational count, and I'll just set that equal to zero to start. And I actually need to make that declared up here, so I'll just use, I'll just add it here. So rote count, and this will be because I'm not just going to rotate it one time. I'm going to rotate it up to four times, okay, and then it will restart. So this is kind of like the idea. I didn't know at the time what I was going to do exactly, but I, I tried that and it worked. Now, instead of doing the shape, I can actually try OS. Okay, so now if I try that, this somewhat solved my problem. So let me try that. If you do this now, it, it works, but it always goes back to the original and it goes back to zero. So it didn't quite work exactly the way I wanted it to. So what I realized is you have to offset it by the current location of the shape. But what point of the shape do I want to use as my rotation? So actually, this is where I had to think about like rotating an object. We need to pick one of these blocks and rotate it around that point. So for example, if I use the first, or the index one, x, 
and I shift this one by the index 1, y, okay, then it will actually take into account the fact that this thing is moving. So then now it looked like it was all over the place. But actually, believe it or not, I'm not sure how this works, but I, I thought maybe because I have two points, I've got to do this process twice. And lo and behold, it actually works. <laughs> See that? So I didn't understand it, and I still don't completely understand it. I mean, it made sense enough. You ever get to that point where you're just like, okay, that works fine. And I think a lot of computer programmers do that. They've, they've tested it, and they've gone with it, and something popped up in their brain, and they, they tried it, and it, it works. So yay, it works. Now, the one thing is, if you'll notice, if I push up again, it doesn't keep rotating. And that's because we've only done the first scenario. You see, switching these, if you go back to the slideshow, that is only this one, right? I need to now do the second one and the third one. So that's what the rote count is for. So let's actually indent this right here. And we'll say if rote count divided by four, because we have four possibility possible states. If that is the case, all right, we do this. Okay, and then we'll say else if rote count mod four equals one. So the, the key is that once you get it working, the first part, you can actually do the rest. So I'm just gonna copy this real fast. Save time. Uh-oh, my indentation's not quite, I think it is okay. Okay, and let me paste it one more time. If you put your cursor all the way to the left, it should keep your indentation. Okay, so we'll do, uh, um, so how does it change in the second slide? So x, y goes to negative x, negative y. So they'll both have a negative sign here. And this will just be x though. So I'll leave it at zero and this will be y. So that works for that part. And then when it's 270, it does switch, but the negative sign is here instead of there. And the other option What's the last part going to be? I'm just going to do the same thing, but I'm not going to change anything. So I'm not going to put a negative and I'm not going to change any, it's the original shape and this just puts it back to the way it was. All right, and so, so far so good. And then now I have an extra um, if statement, right? So if this, if this, if that. That's my four, that's my brace for my four, and that's that, okay? And then that should work. So then in here, I just need to tell, after I've done this, I just have to say, hey, you need to update your um, rote count. Ah! <laughs> so each time I press the button, rote count plus plus. So that should update it. So now when I run this, I can move it left, I can move it right, and I can push up and it rotates the object and it just keeps rotating, okay? So you can see the point that's staying still is that point. So I think I explained this, but just to review in case I didn't, I decided to make all of the first, I guess, index number one, I. It's like the first one has an index of zero. So if you look at the second one in the array, which has an index of one, they're all one zero. I just decided to make them. So you could have done them in any order. I just did that so they would all rotate about the same point. So then when you look at the point that I chose to offset, so this is the translation part that I subtract from it. And what I ended up doing was I did the one, which represents the second values x and the second values y. So I use that point one zero for all of them so that they're all rotating about the same point. So if you see even the line, if I rotate this one, you see the point that's staying still is that is that that's the first point, one zero. And so I don't know, it doesn't really matter. I do want to point out though, the one thing is the square. Thank you for popping up. The square does this. So I don't like that because I don't want to rotate the point of the square because there is no good way to rotate the square unless you're rotating about the, the center. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of this 
thing right here that does this. This is all the code, all of it, literally all of it. And I'm just going to indent it. And I'm going to have this in a big if statement. And it's just going to say if the shape does not equal square. <laughs> so if it's not a square, whoops. So that's basically just saying except for the square. So everything else should behave the same. And if it's a square, oh, perfect. This is like magic. See, it's not going to do anything because a, sh a square can't rotate. I mean, it's going to rotate, but it'll be the same shape. Oh, great. Now, something else, please. All right. So now let's make sure that everything else is working. Okay, good. So let's go ahead. Final thing, final touch. Let's add the moving down back in. And let's be finished with rotations. So here we got our game. We can rotate. We can set it down. Now, what do we need? Yes, a new shape. Stay tuned for the next tutorial, which is actually a lot easier and more fun. See you on the next one.